Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are on this fast forward planet, which is wrapped in a pandemic still. It's still hard to believe um, for those in places where there is significant vaccination and healthcare, but uh, you know, several billion people with a B are still not vaccinated. It's wrapped in uncertainty now because of Vladimir Putin and his uh, atrocious uh, invasion of Ukraine, which is still intensifying. I just wrote another piece on my revkin.bulletin.com newsletter, blog, whatever you want to call it, about uh, what this means for global security and for the environment if, if, if the worst case comes to pass, which I hope it won't. Um, but it's important to take a breath every every day, if you can, every week, if you certainly can, and engage with the arts, which are a vital pathway to sanity and impact. Uh, and one of the great, one, one, a, a super uh, example of how the arts can engage toward uh, solutions and toward awareness of the sort of global connectedness and the oceans and climate and and society, uh, this project is one of those efforts. So it's called Small Island Big Song. I'm just going to add one more person here. Hello, Selena. I'm going to start with a little recording that kind of gives you a, a visual sense of what they do. And then we're going to connect with them uh, from here and there and everywhere. So hold on and get, this will give you an idea. And please share this with folks right now. As you see, you're, you're going to see we're going to show more clips. And they're coming to Symphony Space for a face-to-face -face, um, audience uh, adventure uh, later this month. Ayaw no mabuta mi chaan. Si ayaw nang durian. Dai ni ini ang makapas ko ta puli puli. Si si sakti. Well, that is just spectacular. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Hold on one second. Well, I, there we go. Make sure that stops. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, Bao Bao Chen and Tim Cole, who founded this project, uh, Small Island Big Song, and with two performers who are part of it, uh, Selena Lim and Emlyn. Emlyn's from Mauritius. Selena is from the Marshall Islands, which are facing a big challenge with sea level rise from climate change. Um, and uh, people are on the move. Uh, I just wrote this piece uh, beginning of the week on the new UN climate report on climate impacts. And one of the most troubling is sea level rise. It's already underway. It's accelerating and uh, it's changing the planet in big ways. And if you're on a small island, particularly one of the low ones, uh, I've had the uh, honor and privilege of being in the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean in the past. I've been to Maldives. I've been to uh, Fiji, uh, many places as a reporter, and uh, I've seen these challenges up close. And here we're going to talk about how the arts can make a difference. So thank you both, all of you, for being here. And you're sort of scattered around because you're on tour essentially right now. And I think that, are you all in the same place? Are you all in Michigan? Or Selena, where are you? Uh, hold on. I'm just... in Chicago right now. So you're in Chicago. Yes. Far from where you 
originated. Yes. And, and you're all the others. You're in Michigan somewhere. Yeah, we're in the countryside. We got our Airbnb. Uh, by a frozen lake for our week off. Oh yes, frozen for sure. It's been it frigid here in, uh, in Lenape uh, territory in the Hudson Valley uh, where I live. Uh, so maybe Bao Bao and and Tim, if you can just sort of tell people what it is they just saw and what they're what we're what we're looking at here. What was the the vision and uh, what is this? Well, what you just saw is the is the result of like seven years now of, of mm. us uh, and all the artists that we've met and working on Small Island Big Song. Uh, I, I guess it began. Look, I've been working in cross-cultural projects in Australia, like with Aboriginal artists and across the Pacific and Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea uh, for like almost three decades. And and I met Bao Bao and we were living in Central Australia, building our relationship. And we heard the fifth IPCC report. Mm. And we just thought from that moment on, whatever we do going forward, as they say, mm. um, it had to. this had to be the lens, the focus. Uh, yeah, so within one month, we quit our jobs and and took a three years journey across the ocean just recording and filming with with artists um and and here we are <laughs> with wow. some of the musicians here and there is you're also building this sort of interconnectedness with the music too it's not just sort of like a conventional documentary or the like uh, it reminds me a little bit at least that format of play for change which is a, a mm -hmm. web project that i really was excited by the first time i saw it and, can you just describe that part? You know, your what's your vision in, in a way? How are you using the music and, and the arts? Well, yeah, that, that's the, for us. That's the core of what we're doing because we really believe that culture, you know, the way we see ourselves there in, in our environment is the key. It's shaped by our environment, and in turn, our personal narrative, the way we see ourselves, shapes that. So our idea was to go to meet people that represent, that carry the cultural the voice of their island through their music, through their languages, all shaped by living there. And these artists, all, all of the people you, you're seeing, Selena, Emily, and everyone on stage on the album, all identify as song keepers, cultural keepers in a sense, and, and know the stories. And by uniting them, we're not just talking about our relationship to the earth in these places, we're also talking about our whole planet about our cultural relationship to our environment, to nature, and perhaps inspiring some new ways to look at our relationship to the earth, particularly because our Western culture is failing us. Our, our ecosystem is really collapsing. You know, it's right in front of us, the evidence is clear, the science is there, but why aren't we acting? Why aren't we doing something about it? So how, how long ago did you start doing uh, in-person uh, convenings in other words you know so like play for change people are scattered all around the world and they, they record the same song but you you're taking it to this to, to the performance uh, space as well as you are going to be doing at symphony space uh, on march 18th but you've already been at this right so how did that become part of it the, yeah, so um, our con we started touring as a as a band back in two thousand eighteen. Actually, our first like world premiere was at South by Southwest. Um, ah, great. In they love it. Yeah, and um, and then we just started to to tour around the world and um, before until, until pandemic hit. Uh, but this tour, this US tour, is our largest scale um, tour ever four months across across so many different performing arts centers and, and universities. And, and we're, we're really excited to be at Symphony Space. Well, and just yeah. quickly, the difference with playing for change is they, they have an already composed song, mm -mm. but ours is about collaboration. It's about right. writing right, music right. together, you know, which, yeah. which unites. That's great. Voices, yeah. Yeah, and we're going to show, I'll show a uh, one of the, an example in a minute. And let's, let's start with uh, hearing from, from Emlyn and, and, and Selena a little bit about your personal backgrounds. Um, uh, Emlyn, can you sort of describe a little bit how you became who you are so far? You know, what brought you into uh, music and then how did you get engaged with this? Uh, well, I, I started 
uh, in the arts as a dancer, actually, since uh, I was very young and I did dancing for like 10 years. And then I started uh, doing music because I was drawn to singing and uh, music. And I grew up in a very contemporary space in my island, you know, because I'm from a younger generation and with like globalization, you, you we are in this moment where, you know, we listen to a lot of different music from my generation. But then when I, I, went, I reached like 18, 19, I started asking myself, you know, uh, what is really the music that I want to play? And what is really what I, I identify to? And then I went back to the roots of my island, really into the music, traditional music. So then I went into this world of traditional music. I picked up the traditional drum that is the Ravan, started playing and started going to all the storytellers of my island, the old people that you know carry all the knowledge about culture and about uh, the, the Sega music that we, mm. that we uh, play. Right. So yeah, then I got into like, you know, traditional music and I, I, I realized that it was really the identity of, of our island. So then I went into this path and, and also in the path, you know, in the island, I started being more, you know, aware of what is happening to the nature around the world. And we saw the changes as youngsters in the island, how from the moment I was a child until now, how the, the climate is changing, the beach is changing, the nature is being slowly destroyed. And, and then we started the uh, um, organization with my friend Khan. We started uh, cleaning up the beaches and, and making events about awareness about the climate and about plastic pollution, especially because it's something that is happening a lot in Mauritius, you know, a uh, sure. lot of plastic of trash everywhere. So, yeah, and then I finally met Bobao and Tim, you know, <laughs> because all the, you know, all the warriors of, of nature have to come together hey. at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so and then I, I met them and, yeah, we are today. Right. Yeah. And and uh, Selena, so you're from an entirely different part of the ocean, Oceana, the ocean part of this planet. And can you describe a little bit about how you uh, got involved with this the same way? For myself, I really credit my grandfather for how I came to learn about the climate crisis. And it was really through his stories and warnings of how the earth is going to flood and our islands are going to be underwater soon. And that was his way of reprimanding me so that I would be scared into obeying him more so that when I'm a good child and God will put me in heaven <laughs> once our islands get flooded. Um, but as I was growing up, I just became super sensitive to the changes of my environment. And when I got to attend a boarding school in Germany, whose focus was on sustainability and the environment, there was an opportunity to speak at one of the climate, uh, one of the environmental laureates event that my teacher asked if I could speak at. And from there, really started my work as a climate warrior and starting to write and give speeches about the impacts of the climate crisis in the Marshall Islands, and as well as writing poems, which now I perform and have been asked by Smile and Big Song through Instagram, <laughs> Instagram direct message to come oh. and be the, um, the spoken word artist for the group. And so that's, that's been the journey for me. That, that, that's so fantastic. It, you know, I, I try to, for for many for a couple of decades, as social media has emerged, I've been trying to both teach about and focus people on the upside of of how of the connectedness that it creates. You know, we think the downside is in our faces every day, especially when there's a pandemic or uh, you know these polarizing issues. But the fact that you were able to connect by by being public with your your arts uh, on social Instagram and having a uh, Bao Bao and Tim find your work that way it seems amazing. Tim, Tim and Bao Bao, what, what, how did that come about? You know, how did you zero in on her that way? That's just really cool. 
Um, actually, it was um, we we were part of a, a, a an NGO uh, <sighs> Japanese NGO uh, crew peace boat, and mm. we were on board for for they they took us from Japan to Madagascar to meet some of the musicians. And it was through their recommendation um, we got to know Selena's work, and and, and and through YouTube and more social media as well. That's yes, so cool. that's yeah, so cool. In, well, sorry, no, nothing. Uh, just making a bad uh, social media joke about cat videos, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't watch. <laughs> yeah, but that you know that, but that does say you know. Uh, like I, I, I have a bunch of friends who are photographers who are very active on um, Instagram, for example, but who don't necessarily use it to get beyond people clicking and liking the piece of the photograph. And what I like about this project is you're taking it to these other dimensions. It's not just, oh, cool, like go on to the next thing. You're, you're building a community and that, that's really powerful. Part of the um, meeting in as well was through researching online uh, different market events and mm. and artists across the Indian Ocean and yeah and, and, and like and, and and found we had connections through Madagascar and our musician Sammy yeah. yeah yeah I mean I'm old enough I know I'm the oldest person here right so to remember to to be able to reflect on the impossibility of this 20 years ago you know oh it, it, People I saw walk on the moon back in the old black yeah. and white TV. Oh, it's there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but world, I mean, world music was becoming a thing, you know, uh, and actually the World Music Institute is part of the project uh, coming up at, um, yeah. uh, at, at uh, Symphony Space. And people were trading albums and music was getting around before social media. But now just the ability to kind of convene and, and connect is great. I'm going to show that next, an another clip here, and then we can talk about this some more. And hopefully everyone who's watching can share the link you're watching on right now with others. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get this right. Their people displaced, their lands taken, my lands drowning. Oh. <laughs> that is just spectacular. That took a lot of doing too. The writing, the uh, production, the filming. I uh, yeah. it's just so impressive. Uh, Emily had to climb the uh, Le Mans twice because they <laughs> it didn't get to the top. Oh, three times. Times. Hold on one second. I just have to stop the uh, video. Whoops. I'm my own producer here. <laughs> so yeah, so let's talk about that. That how did that come about? This particular piece is just just way in. 
uh, I think I started uh, having this melody and just this uh, little verse when I was um, sitting uh, next next to the sea. You know, I was living before coming on to. I was uh, living just by the mountain that you see in the music video, and I just started with this melody and I. I shared it with the group and everybody just added on that. And also what I was talking about is, you know, I'm talking about our ancestors, which in my country we had to go through colonization, you know, and slavery and uh, actually put out uh, the other singer that you see. She just resonated with what I was saying because uh, she said that for her tribe, they had to go through colonization also. Mm -hmm. So he just wrote a, a verse yes. and everybody added on that and magic. <laughs> who, is, who is holding the camera? How did that, yeah, that... Well, that's, People... it's all in house. So it's all between all of us. Like uh, I film part of it and yeah, Ken and who's Ken. practicing Ken Ravana in the background. Just behind some uh, yeah. evil and Lynn's part. Yeah. yeah. And now education designer who we work with here in the US film Andrew. with Selena. Yeah. It's all, yeah, we just imagine it ourselves and, and go out. <laughs> wow. and it. It's just amazing um, because they're uh, running up a hill. People forget what the logistics are like there. You're seeing someone climbing up a mountain, but that means someone above them is also climbing up the mountain with wow. the camera looking backwards. So that's wow. uh, pretty. That was something. So it's a narrative about reclaiming identity, you know, and relationship to the earth and land yeah. by, by climbing these these iconic sort of places, yeah, Le Mans, and where where um, Bhutan does as well is the is the headland of her traditional land. Mm. Amazing. And then, and then to Selena on the Marshall Islands, the, all connecting the the people are being taken from their land, you know. And the yeah. land is also being taken from the people. The That's land right. needs its voice. It needs its custodians. It needs its protectors. Yeah. Right. So, S Selena, t tell me a little bit more about your 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 spoken word work. You know, how do you uh, how do you uh, come to that and just describe the the things you you write about and then speak about. The spoken word in the Lisbon Zonset, or just in general. Well, both. Uh, so in the song, it's really, as Tim is saying, reclaiming the land, acknowledging the people, and uh, acknowledging and, ident and understanding and seeing and reclaiming and also letting people know that these things are happening. And our lands have been taken, our people have been displaced, and our islands are, in fact, um, drowning. Some of the islands in my country itself have already disappeared and now right. it's just sand. And my writings, they really are just imageries that I get in my head from listening to my people talk, just observing my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And at random times of the day, I really just get words just start sprouting in my head. And I always have a book next to me or my phone. And then I just take either of them out and I just start writing it down. Mm. So that later in the day or whenever I have time to collect all my thoughts again, then I sit down and then just start weaving all of them together. So that's how my spoken words are usually, uh, that's how they usually come to life. Mm. And Emlyn, uh, just a little bit more on your process too. I, you said you were sitting by the, the, the ocean when you started to come up with some of these concepts, but um, is there some other aspect of how it, it, were you, did you study, were you focused on literature, poetry, music, uh, academically too? One thing I'm thinking about here is education. Is this, is this being used in, uh, classrooms yet? Uh, that kind of thing. If I studied music. Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't study music in music school, you know? Uh, like our culture is passed uh, orally and by meeting the the griots kind of 
the people that keep the culture. So this is I I I learn music on the street. Yeah. What other ways are you passing it on, like uh, through your foundation? Ah, okay. Uh, so yeah, we uh, we have this uh, project called An Ocean Vivable, which means one vivable ocean in the Creole. And uh, we just meet with the kids. We do workshops with them where we teach them like the, the traditional drum. But uh, Khan, also my friend who has this project, uh, Trash to Music. So we mm. make instruments uh, out of uh, trash. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So then, yeah, we try to make like traditional instruments with the trash that we, we found, we, we find in the street. Like we make our traditional drum with the plastic and, you know, sh some shakers with whatever we can find, you know, a little bottle and some rice inside. And we just keep the culture and the music going like that, you know, by and creating will, this community. Which will be, will be on stage. You'll see yes. on, yes. at the concert. Oh, yeah. On Broadway. <laughs> yes. yeah. New York City. Right, see March me. March 18th. Symphony yeah. Space, so people can just search for Symphony Space, uh, and you'll you'll see this, the uh, website and the calendar. That's really great to, to know. Um, I want to share one more thing here. That's, I think I found your uh, uh, your project uh, page on Facebook. So, on Ocean Vivable. I'm correct? not sure if it's us who posted that. But uh, okay. Actually, in um, we had to make a kind of protest because. There's a lot of beach that are that are being taken, like public beaches that are being taken by by the government and and sold to foreigners to make like big hotels. Mm -hmm. And some of them are on wetlands. Some of them are on beach where turtles come to to uh, lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. So right. actually, like yeah, we we bring our voices to different different. Causes yeah. that are important, you know, because we we want to protect the nature from our island and from everywhere in the world. Yeah, it's a it's a theme of Small Island Big Song that all the artists they're not just the song keepers and identifiers carrying the music traditions and of their islands. They're also, you know, they're activists. They're they're, they're standing up and doing things to protect their their islands and homelands too. Exactly. Great. Good. There's a question or a comment that came in. I want to show and see if you have some thoughts about this. Uh, let's see here. Jeanette Barcelos Kravitz says, I'm working with the ministries in Indonesia in a major youth earth education, partnering with a 30 year old group in Sumatra and Jakarta to start. We, we are an NGO and use music to promote peace and earth uh, regeneration. Please reach out. I'm in Chicago. Wait, do you know these people? Well, I don't, but I know I've been to, you know, Sumatra, Jakarta, Indonesia, Sumatra, particularly incredible place. And that yeah, so there's a right, right down, write this down. Or people can, you can come back later and we'll check it out. Earlier. We connected with our shows there, but we'll follow so, that up. Oh, yeah. we, we have a, our Chicago show is coming up um, ah. in a couple of weeks. Yeah. In okay. Weeks. Yes. Is, 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 I'll ah. show your website in a minute so people know how to find all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we make cool. space for people to share the work they're doing that could be appropriate. Yeah, I guess I guess that leads just leads to another question. Where you know, how, what's your goal? How how expansive can this become? Uh, here's Indonesia I, and uh, this particular NGO. Are, are you like a network of networks? Or yeah, could that, we have could that work? in Indonesia, and our, yeah. our first album has Indonesian. Mm -hmm. Artists also from Borneo and the Malaysian side, Sarawak. And Bali. Bali, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, the music in Bali is so yeah. magical. I was there in 1979. Wow. 1979. Wow, must be so different back then. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people tell me. That's what um, people tell me. Yeah, yeah. When I was there first time, late, late 80s, yeah, and I've seen a lot of changes since then. Yeah, but but it's you, all of Indonesia is really unique and diverse cultures, extraordinary place. Yeah. Particularly yeah. So I just saw a, a, a question: Where is the Chicago show? Um, it's at the Dorothy Menker Theater. Um, okay, it's sort of just outside of the Chicago city a little bit, but we can put it in the in the chat. 
Great, yes. great. Yeah, if you do that, I'll I'll elevate it. Um, and I'm just showing people your website here now, which is it's a really yeah, good has, resource too. He has our, he has our, um, our tour dates on the website. So everyone, it's, it's small it's island, <laughs> small island big song .com. Yes. Yeah, it's this is Baba's work, and she got nominated for best um, music website in the Independent uh, American Music Awards. Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really good. It's really dynamic. I love, I love the website, um, and yeah, the con the content, of course, it's just fantastic. Oh yeah, here's a your tour. So you've already been in Seattle, uh, a couple, of, several places in Washington State. Uh, you were at Stanford. Where did you get, uh, what have the responses been like? What do people think when they see this? Uh, how does that? It's it's really supportive and it's great to meet with like-minded people and, and sh you know, share our, our passion for our beautiful planet and, and to support each other and what we can do to protect it. Um, yeah, it's, and it, a lot of the show is really uplifting because we want to celebrate, you know. If we, we can't appreciate and love, you know, how precious this is, you know, how can we protect and, and save it? But we do go, oh, we, we go to some of the sad parts too, yeah. Who's the next? <sighs> so, you know, but we're not there to, it's not finger pointing and that sort of uh, show. It's um, it's uniting and supportive and... and and often a, a lot of the concerts we we work with local artists or um or or, or band or sometimes we have the first nation um elder coming to do land acknowledgement yeah. um that's great for yeah for us which is really important um for for the all for all of us have you yeah. connected yet is there any uh, musical involvement from british columbia the, the northwest coast of we haven't been to that party. That's the next uh, next leg. <laughs> yeah, I know some people there. I, I was working on a book in, in the early '90s in that region and got to know the Heisla uh, Nation really well. And the, uh -huh. the, the, the music traditions there are, are amazing. It and in so many of these places, what you're seeing is is to me something very exciting. It it's not just preserving what was. I think a lot of people in the West come to these ideas about music traditions and think, oh, it's let's save these songs or whatever. But what I see increasingly is, is, a, um, is a tendency to reinvent, to renew, to sort of build on traditions um, to create new music, which is what you, both Emlyn and Salim here seem to be uh, really adept at doing. So I, I don't know if that feels resonant too. That was certainly happening in the in, in British Columbia when I was there. Yeah, they're absolutely living alive now, drawing on the past with a vision of the future. And that's right. the role we have to play is to create that that synergy and and that you know continue on continuing these voices. Yeah, and I think we all can work on that more wherever we come from. Um, I actually have family roots in Ukraine. <laughs> My my grand my father's father came from one of these villages that's now overrun by Russia. I don't really have particular aff uh, affiliation sense in my head because he left under uh, threat of death. You, you know, this is nineteen you know, the turn of the last century. But I do feel I'm missing some of the pull of those traditions too. I'd like to learn more. I was thinking someday of going there. <laughs> it might take a while to uh, get back to uh, Repki, this little village uh, near Chernayev, which is one of the cities that's being assaulted by um, Putin. So we all have yeah. roots somewhere. Yeah, see, um, like I'm from Taiwan, so I do feel, yeah. you know, concern as well for, for my country. And and this is one of the one of the goals for, for doing Small Island Big Song is to talk about the indigenous relationship that Taiwanese indigenous people have with the Pacific and Indian Ocean, because for a long time, we just keep looking at, you know, China and, and the cross-strait relationship, um, which dominated a lot, a lot of the political um, discussions. But for, for thousands of years, um, Taiwanese indigenous people do have very strong like cultural and music and um, 
um, lots of connections with the Pacific and Indian Ocean. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, yeah, the, the more we can do to build on that model, I think the better. I want to show there's another clip here that uh, I was pointed to. So let me uh, get that set up. And um, are you also, not, sorry? I hope it's not a cat video. It's not a cat video. No, it's one, it's one of your, it's one of from, from you guys. Although I must say that, that I don't know if you saw that um, when we were all Zoomified, there was that uh, the really best cat video ever. The, the, the <laughs> lawyer, the lawyer from in, in a courtroom situation on Zoom, who was a cat, <laughs> and didn't realize. Uh, we a discussion on cat videos. In. <laughs> yeah, that one was spectacular. Okay, so hold on, let me just uh, get this uh, other um, video set up, and. Um, how, how's it going for Selena and for Emlyn on the road? You, you know, how how frequently have you been away from your your home uh, islands, and what's it feel like to be uh, literally on the bus? Mm, well, I think it's the longest I will ever be away from my island right now. <laughs> wow! Yeah, uh, because I think I'm I'm going back there in like four or five months. Wow! So I'm, I miss the ocean a lot. This is what is that was cool because just before that we were in Miami, but I miss uh, I miss yeah. the ocean. But I'm happy. I'm happy to be on tour. It's so much adventure, and you know we've been through a pandemic for two years, didn't travel, didn't. so wow. it's it's very eye opening. Also, the tour to meet with so much people. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's. It's, it's great, but I miss the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Selena, I know, I think it's in Springdale, Arkansas. There's a lot of people from the Marshall Islands. I don't know if along the way you've, you've met up with Marshall Islanders. Yeah, we have a big community there. In fact, that's the biggest community of Marshallese we have outside the Marshall Islands. They're yeah. in Arkansas and then um, a big population too in, in Hawaii. Uh, but we haven't gone to that side yet, uh, but I've told them and some of them will be coming up to meet us in, in shows that are happening in nearby states. And I've also been living abroad for since 2014 when I went to study at a boarding school. And But I would usually go back home every summer. But because of the pandemic, I haven't been back home for the past three years. Wow. And similar feelings with Emily and really missing the ocean. So we did get some ocean when we were in Miami, and that was really beautiful. That's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I grew up in Rhode Island, the state of Rhode Island here, which is, I, I grew up really close to the ocean. And I, I li in the Hudson Valley here where I live, the Hudson River happens to be tidal. Like it's, it's really more like a fjord, but it's not the, the ocean, <laughs> you know, and I, I really do miss that time. I also, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I got, I had time right out of college. I ended up in uh, doing a project in the South Pacific. Um, I was studying, I got a fellowship to study the human relationship to the sea by going to small island communities across the Pacific. Wow. I started in uh, French Polynesia in, in, uh, in Mururoa, which is one of the low islands there. And then I went to Raiatea, which is one of the mountainous islands. And then I was in Fiji, New Caledonia, and I ended up on the sailboat after I got to New Zealand just because I was a young guy and there was a boat that needed crew. And I uh, sailed from there through Indonesia to across the Indian Ocean up the Red Sea. So I wow. had this deep sense in my head of that power of the sea. And it, it makes you feel small and uh, island life it, it can gives you that sense of community. You have to cooperate. You, you have no place to run. Being on a boat is the same. So. I, I don't know if there's some aspects of that that resonate for anyone who is involved with this project too. Yeah. Well, that's our thing. We share one small island. That's why it's called small island. Big right. song of small islands. The small island. Earth is, is Earth, right? Earth Island. All right. So here's this uh, other um, video, and hopefully the the volume has been good on these before. I, I have them set up so it should work. So here's a, one more video. Look.
Jan Kob Alev. If this is a story about our islands, it is a story for the whole world. Ara my tagi. I like this end. We see everyone casual. Yeah. Just fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Fantastic. Well, congratulations for all the all that you've been doing, and and you know, I'm I'm sure the pandemic was, as it has been for everybody, a very extraordinary disruption. Hold on, let me make sure that's. Sorry, just a little. Yeah, Emma and and me, we're just talking about like. It's it's so hard to imagine. We actually did it last year. It feels like it's, it's three years ago, yeah. but it was, it was just last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah all remotely. So everyone recorded, and and that case sent the video to me, and I edited. But Can edited the other one. And yeah, it's yeah. a real group effort. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. And, and actually, back to you, Tim. Did did you start out trying to be a filmmaker? What was your first? Well, I, I just I went through this quickly. Yeah, well, I did want to be uh, actually. I wanted to be a sound engineer first off. Went to all the studios in Melbourne. They said this is when I was sixteen that you need experience. So I got into film school. But at night, I, I did actually get into music, and I was sitting in studios all the time. So it's always been the two, film and music. They they go together. So that's why I, I've, I've got big visuals behind the concert. I produced the album. And we made a film also, but our film—it's uh, not a conventional film. It's all about the music. It's all watching musicians play music in nature, drawing on their traditional culture. So it's it's just weaving all those skills together. Same as Cam, who's here, uh, another artist. He weaves it all together. Yeah, that's great. Well, I hope you keep weaving it all together. I'm just going to show the scene from the uh, upcoming Symphony Space uh, page as well. One more time here. So for those like me in the New York area, you can experience this face-to-face uh, -face up on a stage uh, March 18th uh, via the World Music Institute. Uh, March 18th, uh, right in the middle of Manhattan, a uh, small island. Manhattan, of course, being an island. Yes. <laughs> it's hard to remember that sometimes. Uh, and you can Brooklyn. also experience it a bit more intimately if you've got room to put us all up. We're still looking for accommodation. Oh, you are in the area? <laughs> no, seriously, uh, because there that, are. Not serious, actually, because we'd rather hang out in New York and we want to want to do some art activist moments and stuff, but we can't afford to stay anywhere. We've got to leave. Yeah. Uh, well, I could uh, see what I could do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the idea is right up where I live. There's the Garrison Institute, which is it's a it's an hour north of the city, but it has a big complex with rooms and stuff. Yeah, they're all cool. they're they're a sustainability center. So maybe or maybe that's what we need. Yeah. I'll check. I'll check. <laughs> um, any last thoughts? Uh, I'm gonna we, we can call this short. It's a Friday. I sadly have to continue my work um, with my uh, work reporting on the Ukraine conflict, but. It's yeah. been a wonderful um, moment here with you all connecting uh, today. So any any last words to those watching now about how to carry this forward? Come see our show. Yeah. And, and how we're absolutely connected to the, the people in you know, Ukraine following it and, and the, the tragedy there. Um, but to also, you know, keep our, our focus on the on that planet as well. It's all in, interwoven and we need to you know, not take our focus also of protecting our planet, you know, if no. that's huge as well. Yeah. And the sense of community, you know, it's harder to fight with somebody if you've been singing with them. <laughs> so <laughs> so yes. that, it, it's all it's all connected. The information environment yeah. helps to determine what happens with the, the environment around us and the lives which are all intermingled. And, you know, if the pandemic showed us one thing, it's that we are all ultimately connected biologically, whether we want to be or not, that the, uh, you know, the pathogens that started out somewhere in Asia ended up in the Amazon River Basin. One um, ecosystem. Not, one, one, one health, as they say. So thank you, everyone here today. Selena, um, um, 
hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. Emlyn, Selena, Tim Cole, and Bao Bao Chen. Uh, good luck with what you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, if I can help, as I just said, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. And, and I am a musician too. So uh, maybe someday I can jam with you guys. That would be great. I did. I spent 20 years playing with Pete Seeger, uh, who, right. who, lived, who lives just five, he lived five minutes away from where I live now. And he was such a great force for connectivity and for music. Um, Global um, music. I, Absolutely. I try to carry that forward. Thanks again. This is uh, Andy Revkin at the Columbia Climate School, Sustain What webcast. And you can read more. I'll be summarizing this in a post on my, my blog, revkin.bulletin.com. Go to smallislandbigsong.com to learn more. And uh, everyone, find time in your life to breathe and exhale and make some of those exhale, exhalations music. On we go into the future. So good luck with your shows and your tour, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.